It's just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Dr. Philip R. Ekman and Dr. Kevin A. Crescitiello. On the I'm left, honored to be on the show, Howard. Oh, thank you. It's an honor to be talking to uh, Randy Ekman's son. Uh, <laughs> your, your father is a dentist. And you were telling me there's five dentists in your family? Yes, five licensed practicing dentists in Pennsylvania. Wow, you guys should all do that uh, 23 and Me genetic testing and see if they find some gene. There might be a dental gene. <laughs> there, de so, there definitely might be. I've met, I've met all of his family. So Philip's the one on the left. Raise your hand, Phil, so they see, in case I got the left right thing. He's been practicing for eight years, graduated from University of Maryland Dental School, which was the first dental school in the world. I think it was like 1840. He graduated there in 2009. He's third generation dentist, lives in hometown of Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, 25 miles west of Philadelphia, and practices with his father, Dr. Randy Ekman, MAGD, beautiful wife, Kelly, and his son, Zach, age two, and daughter, Julie. And Kevin on the right there, hello, Kevin. He's been practicing for eight years also. Grew up in North Carolina, graduated from University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill in 2005. Isn't that where Michael Jordan went? It sure is. It sure is. And he, what, didn't make the team freshman year? Yeah, and uh, high school, yeah. High school, you got cut. That is so hilarious. He graduated from University of Maryland Dental School in 2009 also. He currently practices in a group practice in Pasadena, Maryland, located approximately 50 miles south of Baltimore, Maryland. His beautiful wife, Veronica, with his first child due in November, equally excited and scared of fatherhood. Uh, guys, thanks so much for uh, coming on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having us, Howard. We're uh, we're excited to be on. All right, well, I when I heard what you were doing, I just thought, my God, that is so cool. Um, you this year you invented XRayUpload.com to help people across the globe. Damn, that, that I I just think that's such a cool damn mission. I was so excited to get you on the show. So tell all my homies what they'll find if they go to www.XRayUpload.com. Well, the service is pretty simple, Howard. As you go to the upload page, all the person will have to enter is the patient's gender and then their age group, the standard groupings, you know, 18 to 24, 25 to 34, 35 to 44, et cetera. And then you need to upload an image of your x-ray. You know, most images now are just transmitted across email. It's essentially a JPEG as if you took it with your cell phone. In fact, we've had people take a picture of the computer screen on their way out of the operatory after a cleaning or something and submit a photograph. We could tell it was a photograph, but, you know, honestly, that's enough for us to give some basic free x-ray interpretation. You know, that's what we are. We're for informational purposes only, and we're an organization designed to help, help all people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Phil, Phil's kind of summed it up right there, but um, it's very straightforward. If you're a consumer – um, from from any any different uh, background or market, um, and you have something that you want to have a group of dentists look at for you, um, you can submit it to us, and we'll give you feedback um, pretty pretty quickly. Um, and we, we we promise to have your results to you within forty eight hours of submission. And how much does it cost the uh, consumer to get it looked at? Free, free, free of charge. And and how how does so this is a charity or um, explain that. Explain your business model. Yeah, so initially right now, um, we are kind of exploring a few different pathways to um, profitability, but we're also, we're okay, um, you know, providing this, this I hate to say a niche service, but um, uh, getting into this market where there's not really any other big player in there um, and, you know, kind of, kind of seeing where it goes i guess for lack of a better a better answer we're, we're happy to do it for free for a while howard and we have <laughs> other friends from university of maryland that are ready and willing and you know can help do do responses and replies over email we basically just share one inbox you know all the doctors don't have their own login or anything and uh you know eventually we're going to compensate people but right now we're we're just giving back a little bit and and that is so I'm I'm looking at xrayupload.com and how you upload. So when I take a picture of my iPhone, that's a JPEG. Yes. Mm -hmm. Huh. I never yeah. knew that. Of course, never never thought about it. But that that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and even if you export your image, you know, to your desktop, whether it was sent to you over email or just off your practice management software, that's that's usually a JPEG. You know, when you attach it in an email, you know, all these transfer emails you get. You know, I want to be a patient of your practice, Howard. 
here's my emails being x-rayed from my old office. You know, think how many images are already sitting in inboxes across the country. Right. And, and I'm just curious, I, um, explain to my homies when you're looking, is it going to be a photo or an x-ray? It could be either one, right? A photo. <laughs> Absolutely. It could be either one. I mean, ideally, I think it might be a little easier for us if you actually got a copy of your digital x-ray and uploaded it to us. Um, obviously that's going to help with the evaluation. Uh, make it a little easier for us. But again, as Phil was um, elaborating on, if if you took a picture of your x-ray or if you, you know, for those offices that have traditional film, if you took a picture of a traditional um, uh, film x-ray, um, we would also interpret that for you as well. It blows our mind, Howard, that only 65% of dental offices are, are digital. We, we can't- What, we what can't, percent? We are- yeah, we saw we saw statistics that as of 2016, we saw 65 percent are digital. Two thirds. Uh, yeah, and granted, granted, that's up 10. I'm sorry, that's up. It's du- double from about a decade ago. We saw stats that in 2007 it was around 35, 36 percent. So it's definitely trending that way, right? You know, uh, technology is making it easier um, to to go digital. I mean, that's just the future. Um, you know, there's kind of no no other way around it. Explain uh, why you need to know the age and the gender. So, Howard, we think that that's very important to advertisers. When we do have to monetize to be able to pay our doctors, we want to be able to say to Invisalign, or I don't know if you guys have Smile Direct out there, who uh, Invisalign acquired last July in 2016, their stock's gone up 125% since that acquisition. (laughs) And, uh, Basically, for we're, we're, to, in order to monetize, we want to be able to say we have X number of females age 18 to 34 that visit our site once a month, and it's a free service. So as long as they can pay us a little bit more for the click than uh, what we have to pay on Google AdWords, yeah. we, we can we can deliver a margin yeah. that way. Yeah, there could there could be a, a way to monetize. Also, when we're evaluating certain images, um, it'll help. You know to to see a PA of a tooth uh, for someone who's 65 versus someone who's 18, you know, um, that helps give us some information as to, uh, as to what the prognosis might be for that person and what they should be expecting. Uh, but as Phil was saying, yes, knowing the age brackets, it's just, it will be good information for us to have, um, both to interpret the films uh, or any images that you're, that you're submitting, but to um, also give us some data so we understand kind of you know, what, what we're finding out, what, what the market is out there. Bone density can differ between men and females. And, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. There's just, there's just a lot, you know, that's just one other piece of evidence that will help. And, and it's, uh, something that we like the, the users to, uh, to include. And when did this go live? We're a two month old company. My, my little sister helped design the website and, uh, she took the lock off the homepage on, uh, July 26th. Yeah. And we, we've, we've got a little bit of, uh, feedback so far on data. You know, in the first the first month, there's over a thousand page views. You know, six seven hundred unique visitors. But we hadn't started our our SEO or our online advertising yet. Now we're learning a little bit about you know Instagram and and Facebook and what it takes to have a sponsored ad on there. You know, for for ten dollars a day in the LA market, for example, where there's tons of people, you can have for a ten dollar ad, you can have two thousand people you know, view your, your, your post and, and, you know, 25 of them probably will click on the website based on what we've seen in just a, you know, couple. Yeah. So, I mean, at that, that's roughly what 50 cent per click. That's pretty inexpensive. Wow. Um, so have you started a thread about this on dental town? We have not yet. We're, we, we, we need to work. We want to get your approval first. <laughs> No, every, everybody, everybody's allowed one promotional thread. Like say, say you're, uh, you lecture uh, every weekend and you have a course for money. You can have one thread. You just can't post it in you know, 20 different places. But yeah, okay. every, every company, like if you were uh, any dental company, you can have one thread that's always posting your stuff. Have you talked to the editor of uh, Dental Town Magazine about doing a story on this? We've mostly been in contact with, with Ryan. Can my homies how how can they contact you well howard we we're an organization to help all people consumers dental school students residents even practicing dentists you know i, I think i've heard from your previous podcast that 25 30 percent of your listeners are juniors or 
seniors in, in dental school. And I tell you, I wish I had a service like X-ray upload when uh, we were entering the clinic yeah. here, you know, doing, in, doing, doing treatment plans and yeah, a- absolutely. So we, we're, yeah, we are open to anybody we've had. Um, we've actually had people abroad, other practicing um, uh, clinicians um, in other countries contact us and submit uh, films for us to um, evaluate and give them some feedback as to what they might want to do. Even just curious dentists or colleagues, like we're kind of afraid what image we're going to open. You know what I mean, <laughs> Howard? But uh, we're, well, listen, we really are. We, we, we just want to help. We're happy to confirm treatment plans. I mean, it adds a whole extra level of validation. You know, could you imagine having an x-ray upload certified doctor in your area? Do you give out your email? Yeah. There, on the website, it, yeah. it is possible to email no, no, directly. I mean, I mean on the show right now. Our, you know. our email address is dentist at xrayupload.com. I just sent you an email to uh, dentist at xrayupload.com. And I cc'd uh, Tom Giacobbe, who's the editor of Dental Town Magazine, and Howard Goldstein, who's the uh, head of the message boards. And uh, I, I think you'd, um, you, your, your SEO will explode if all these dentists start checking it out. Um, Google, you know, these people that tell you how SEO works always makes me laugh my head off because, you know, Bing is owned by Microsoft. They can't figure out how Google's doing it. Uh, Yahoo can't figure out how Google's doing it. But the guy at the Holiday Inn, you know, he's <laughs> he knows. He knows. Right. But I'll Microsoft open. doesn't know, and either does Yahoo. But but there's obviously something to a ton of activity in part of that algorithm. You know what I mean? It's not a dark yeah. site, all these people. And if they start clicking it, you know, Dental Town's got dentists from all 200 countries. So if they start clicking it from around the world – They'll, they'll start showing it around the world, you know? Yeah, you've built an amazing media company. We used to fill in our CE in, in 08, 09. We're dating ourselves now. We would mail it into Dental Town for free. We'd, we'd photocopy. And then it went up to $35, but uh, <laughs> we, we had to wait till we got jobs to, to submit then. Well, that's a good point. You guys got to remember because when you're in dental school, all those uh, 450 courses are free. So if you're out there listening to that stuff in dental school, um, you know, you're, you're, I'm sure your dental school instructor is great, but it's, it's great to hear instructors from around the world. And, and when I graduated, I had 16 credits from Dental Town. I did eight classes, and, you know, those were free. You would have had to pay for those. I started out my career of, with 16 units of C. I hadn't graduated yet. Nice, nice. And I'm so proud of your dad who, for getting his MAGD. Is that uh, something he uh, uh, is encouraging you to do? Yes, and he was recognized in 2015 with the Lifelong Servicing Award, LLSR. It's a level of achievement even past MAGD. So he's really proud of it, and he's meticulous about um, submitting every single thing he does. So very, It's, it's uh, called LLSR? Yes, it's a Lifelong Service Recognition, I believe. Oh, it, recognition. It's, it's one level past, uh, I don't know, MAGD. It's not a formal you know, suffix, but uh, there, there might be two or three of them in Pennsylvania. Now, have you guys, uh, have you guys both joined the AGD? Yes. Both of you? And, 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 and tell, us, um, tell us why you joined the AGD. Because I want them to keep track of my CE for me. <laughs> right. Same. That- same. I, 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 would, I would just say that, um, you know, being the best clinician that you can be is, um, is important. You know, I would tell all the homies out there, the dental students um, uh, or in the, any young practitioner, you know, I feel like I'm still a young practitioner, but you can always learn and get better. Um, and it's important. You got to be um, a master of your craft. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you're going to spend your whole life being a cook and own a restaurant, why don't you just be a good chef? I mean, that just seems it just seems so like a no brainer. I mean, I watch sometimes I watch those uh, silly shows and I'm going to sleep uh um, I don't know what the, where they're uh, making the best cupcake or the best uh, the, some some cooking show. And it's, uh, what is it? Cake wars. Yeah, cake wars. Yeah, <laughs> and the, they were doing a Halloween things the other night. And uh, I mean, and it, what was so cool is he, these guys were taking building a Halloween cake or a muffin or a treat. Uh, more serious than many dentists take a root canal. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean they were just uh, they were just it's so cool. So. Uh, so do so you um it's kind of a humanitarian thing but you're hoping you can monetize this someday. Yeah, ab- absolutely. It's it's one of those things. We've actually been in contact with uh, a couple of people who've actually reached out to us um, with questions as to whether we'd be interested in, in uh, partnering with a couple of people who might be able to help us. Um, you know, we see a few different pathways as to um uh, who, who, are know, you thinking, who are you thinking about partnering with? 
we're, we're, it's early talks with a small venture capital firm that funnels money mostly from physicians into different areas. But we're we're not yeah. ready for Shark Tank yet, Howard. We're, <laughs> we're very humble numbers. But some numbers we do want you to hear are that in the United States, age 18 to 64, there's 200 million people according to census.gov. And 64% of the people in that age group had a dental visit in the past year. That's from the CDC. So most patients in that age group get x-rays once a year. You know, minimum x-ray frequency for patients, even with the lowest risk, is every 24 months, according to the ADA. So conservatively, Kevin and I estimate that 100 million people had x-rays during the past 12 months. And that's taken into account low risk criteria, x-ray refusal, all that. Yeah, so there, there, there's a market there. There's a lot of people going in for checkups, um, going in for um, uh, emergency exams. And the dental uh, consumer, uh, from their perspective, you know, it's hard for them to understand uh, what needs to be done um, when they have no pain and they can't see something that's going on. Um, so, again, you know, uh, a lot of times we're just going to be validating uh, what our peers are, are telling consumers. But it's um, it's nice to know. Um, and there's a lot of that in other industries. Um, you know, it's, um, you know, how do you uh, know what the right price is to buy a car or whether the car has uh, a bad history, a wreck history? There's all types of services in other industries that exist. Um, and so there, there's a market there uh, for consumers um, on the dental side. You know what? What's kind of funny uh, with dentists is um, they often they often say things, and uh, but but their actions don't follow. I mean, I guess all humans say that. Like for instance, when they're young and they're your age, um, they're all against holistic dentists and alternative medicine and natural paths and all the thing. And then when they get old, fat, and bald like me, and they're fifty five, and their doctor says you need to take a high blood pressure pill and a statin to lower your cholesterol, they're like, oh, I don't, I don't want to do the traditional medicine. I want to, uh, I, I want to you know, lose weight, exercise, and do it yeah. naturally. And it's like, dude, you've been slamming alternative medicine, and you <laughs> always reject what your MD tells you. And the other thing is with second opinions. If you go back in dental time, I've been on that site four hours a day minimum since 1998, and dentists get emotionally thrown off their horse when someone gets a second opinion. Oh, yeah. but when Doc gets prostate cancer, guess how many opinions he gets? He yeah. goes to his local hospital. He might go to, you know, uh, um, Mayo or Scripps or, um, you know, um, Houston, Cleveland Center. It's like, so, you know, it's going to be so funny. You're going to see this so many times where a patient, Dr. Good, with his MAGD is going to say, you have two cavities. But a smart consumer is going to sit there and thought, well, hell, if I can upload that for free, I want to see yep. if he's right. Yep. I mean, I mean, why? I, but, it, but isn't it funny how they are? The dentists, yeah, are dentists are emotionally hurt when their patients get a second opinion, yet they absolutely. always get a second opinion for themselves. A absolutely. You don't always, always know that there should be a market for, some, for something. You know, there's all types of things that we didn't know we needed certain things until the market kind of popped up and it's there. Um, we kicked around this idea – for quite a while, you know, um, it's something that uh, Howard, I'm sure you've seen it. Listeners have seen it. You're in your practice. You're working every day, once a week, twice a week, three times a week. Someone comes in and they want a second opinion. They say, "Hey, I saw someone a week ago. They told it, told me I needed X, Y, and Z. I didn't feel comfortable for some reason. Um, you know, it doesn't mean what they were told was wrong, but they just they want to explore their options. Um, and again, that there's a, there's a need there. Um, and if we can get the word out that we're available, um, you know, or, or what if you used up your two exams for the year already, you know, most people have PPOs, you know, come, come November, December. What if you, you'd have to pay out of pocket for a consultation? We're, we're there. We're the, we, 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 we want to stay in our, in our space and we want to be an x-ray service. You know, we, we are the nice guy fact checkers. We just are an organization to help right now. Yeah, even I got a second opinion. I got a physical last week, and my doctor told me I was short, fat, and bald, so I got another opinion. He said, dude, you're short, fat, bald, and ugly. He missed, yeah, he missed one. Well, yeah. you, need, you need a third opinion. You should just stuff it. Yeah, third opinion. Um, yeah I, I think, and a lot, you know, the confusing thing for, I think, uh, people that don't live in the United States, you know, when you talk about the health care for, like, Canada or Australia or New Zealand, it's one system for the whole country. But when you talk about the United States, Medicare – is a federal program for all seniors, but Medicaid is different in all 50 states. And a lot of those state Medicaid programs, they don't, the, the exam might only be covered one time a year. 
mm-hmm. you know? So uh, it, it's so uh, confusing yeah. to talk about um, Medicaid for the poor uh, when you're talking to anybody from another country because I got it, it varies so much just between Arizona and California that you'd have to be a lawyer to understand the differences. A- absolutely. There's also, um, you know, there's a component of access to care, maybe. I don't know if that's the right the right phrase or terminology, but um, direct to consumer, maybe. You know, all of those things kind of a- apply to what we're doing, um, you know, providing a service that just we're trying to make it as easy as possible for people um, to get more information about what they've got going on. Well, I think you should start a thread on it in Dentaltown and get a bunch of feedback uh, uh, on that. And then I think you should uh, email uh, Tom Giacobbe and uh, write a story on this because I, I, th- I think what you're doing, it's so damn innovative. It's high tech. It's something you'd have to be. Are you guys technically millennials? I mean, you're both 34. <laughs> we're, 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 getting, we're getting there. This is, what, for, this is forced us to, to really step up our game. What, what, uh, what year? Uh, millennials born in 1980 and after. What year were you guys born? 83. 83. Oh, so you're both millennials. I mean, this is something only a young, high tech, innovative <laughs> millennial. Your dad, your dad and me would have never thought of this. So, <laughs> so what's your dad think of it? He thinks it's a great idea. He says it's long overdue. Nice. Nice. And you don't, and, and, and you don't have to charge. I mean, it, people, you never get off the ground if you charge. That's the way we feel. And it doesn't really cost us much to do it. And, and if we get too busy, we're going to, you know, there's probably going to be advertisers that want to help pay our costs. So we're just going to write our replies, look at a, a film, give you our gosh darn honest opinion. You know, we're careful not to say uh, a tooth should be extracted. We'll say has a hopeless prognosis because we don't know their medical history. You know, we, you know, real no medical advice can be given absent an ex- exam and history. There's going to be stuff. There's going to be clinical findings that we can't. We're just an X-ray interpretation service for informational purposes only. And, uh, you know, if 1% of the people who have dental x-rays in a year use x-ray upload, that equates to 85,000 users per month, Howard. Yeah. So did you have a really, really, really good lawyer look over your uh, terms and condition? A malpractice lawyer in Philadelphia, a patient of mine. Uh, I restored a implant for him that was in his jaw for 20 years. I uncovered it and everything. So he's a great guy and he's happy to be on my side. Yeah, it says there is no doctor-patient relationship with X-ray Upload. Film interpretations are for informational purposes only. The information provided on this website should not replace the medical advice given by your doctor or a qualified health care provider. Any recommendations for treatment are not the legal responsibilities of the doctor. The essential findings are discovered during an exam that will not be demonstrated on film. Medical advice cannot be given absent the exam in history. All replies are based strictly off radiographic evidence and do not take into consideration patient symptoms or clinical evidence. Information is submitted on a voluntary basis, thus giving consent to its collection, use, and disclosure. You will receive notice within 48 hours if your x-ray is inadequate. or radiograph interpretation cannot be made by our doctors. How many pictures can they upload for this? multiple i think it's are we at four or six right now i think six i think it's six um so uh, i mean i guess maybe we're a little limited there um with regards to if someone had for example a full mouth series or something but um we, that- pre- we prefer one x-ray and then you know a, a photo if you have it we'll do a couple but this isn't we don't really want it to be abused if you if you know what i mean you, yeah it's we're- not it's not exactly oh a- no no ryan and i are gonna abuse it we'll think of something. <laughs> all right ryan we'll we'll think of some way to uh, yeah. to to <laughs> um, to make them blush. No, it's, um, it's not it's not meant to be a full exam. That's one of the issues that we talked about for a long time. Was you know can is this something we should do because we're not doing a clinical exam, right? You know, there's going to be limitations with what we can do. Uh, but ultimately, we decided that yeah, there's some limitations, but um, there's still again there's a service that can that can be given, and uh, they're going to be users who want to use it. Well, man, is, and I love your name also, X-ray Upload. I mean, it's clear, it's concise, it's succinct. Uh, yep. You know, I mean, it's just uh, X-ray upload. I mean, thank you. We, we were ha- we were happy to see it was available when we tried to buy the domain name. We we kind of wanted to stay general. You know, what happens if a hand surgeon or a spine surgeon they they use a two D film still too? What if we need to branch off into medicine? You know, we want to be able to stay on top of the X-ray upload search because Howard, it's not getting any smaller. You know. What did we say? 35% of the dentists still aren't even using digital. So we're just trying to position ourselves in the field and, you know, yeah, everything's yeah. going direct to consumer. You know, I'm not sure if, if you guys have Smile Direct out there, but it's a company that was acquired by Invisalign. It's pretty much east of the Mississippi. And uh, 
Last July, they bought them for $46 million for 17% of the company. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's again, people, people are, you know, uh, for, what, for whatever reason, they want access to care, they want things to be easy, and we're just trying to leverage um, the, the technology that's available. You know, you get an exam, your clinician can email you the films and you can get a second opinion, it's pretty easy. People don't wanna get in their car to drive to appointments. They want access remotely and instantaneously. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? It's, uh, it's amazing because that, that Invisalign, what's the name of that CEO, Ryan? Joe Hogan, and who's the MMA fighter guy, Joe Rogan? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Joe Rogan. We'll um, we'll have to see if they'll ever uh, square up. Um, I, I I've seen Joe Rogan on um, um, Joe Hogan, uh, CEO of Invisalign, on uh, Mad Money with Kramer, and yeah. um, it's pretty cool because some uh, some um, I, you know I've seen this rodeo so many times. I remember when uh, Interplac came out with an electric toothbrush. They were selling through dentists. Well, I had no longer. I mean, by the time I had already sold fifteen or twenty or thirty. Um, the next thing I noticed, they were selling them at Walgreens for twenty dollars cheaper, and they were selling them to me. And yeah. I thought, damn! And yeah. uh, and then and then there was in-office bleaching, and then that was making bank. The next thing you know, Crest came out with uh, um, their Crest strips for fifty bucks in a box, and it just killed that business. And now the orthodontists are acting like um, you know they they can't believe this happened. It's like, what do yeah. you mean you can't believe it? And the design found a way to go to bypass the orthodontist. I mean, they did it with Crest, did it with uh, bleaching. Yeah. Um, all the electric toothbrush companies no longer, you know. I mean, now, now you can't even get a toothpaste company to give you samples. You know, yeah. I mean, even if you're going to go to some missionary deal. So, so yeah, so that um, that Smiles Drug Club. Have you guys seen anybody who's done it? We, there's a location in Philadelphia. There's a location in Baltimore. But basically – all you do is you walk in and have a digital impression done at your mouth, you know, and, and of course they're using Invisalign's iTero scanner. And, uh, you know, if you qualify, not that I'm preaching for them or anything, but they mail you your trays. It's pretty yeah. remarkable. It, you know, it's for cases of 20 aligners or less and there can't be any stripping or no attachments, but they've really cut out the doctors. I'm sure they have guys on there signing off on it remotely, but uh, pretty big acquisition. And you know what happened? Since July of 2016, Invisalign's stock is up 125%. They went from $84 in July 2016. I saw it at $189 uh, last week. When dentists were upset, when uh, when Crest started selling um, um, bleach directly to the patient without going to the dentist, again, instead of the dentist being emotionally upset that this is a fact of life, they should have bought this stock. When when yes. people come yes. to me, this makes people – it makes me crazy. They'll say, well, I'm thinking about spending $150,000 on buying a Cirac machine. I say, why don't you spend one hundred fifty thousand dollars and buy their stock? It's called X Ray, and it's on Nasdaq. Yeah. And my God, that would be such a better move. And and yep. you know, same thing on social media. You know, you have to give Facebook money to boost your ads, and that stock's been crazy good. Yeah. Uh, Twitter, Twitter, I've never given them a dime, and their their stock came out at forty and it's down to twenty. Um, yep. th th these companies that you don't give them any money. I mean, you're a dentist. I mean, when you saw. Uh, when you saw all the orthodontists upset and, and you knew there it's going to be faster, yeah. easier, lower costs, you should be buying the stock. And, yeah. and if Joe and if anybody out there knows Joe Hogan, who's the CEO of Invisalign, come on, dude, you went on Kramer. How come you won't come on Howard? We both look the same, yeah. same height, both bald. I mean, you won't, you've, you've already <laughs> you've already practiced with Kramer being on Mad Money. Come on this show. Because I needs, just, he I just second, he, he needs a second opinion, Howard. He needs <laughs> he needs a, he needs you. Yeah. So, so, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think business, business and Dennis, that's another thing they say in their actions. Don't speak. Um, they, they say they're always for the consumer. Um, and it's like, okay, well, what, what are your hours? Monday through Friday, eight to five. Okay. The federal reserve owns more economists than anybody on earth. I think they have like 3000 PhD economists working for them. Every time they do the healthcare, say they say, they say one in every three Americans cannot go to the doctor Monday through Friday from eight to five. Uh, the same guys are saying that at the hospitals, um, eight out of every 100 emergency room visits is odontogenic in origin. And then yeah. the dentist will say, I'm patient centric. It's like, dude, you're yeah. dentist centric. We yeah. see a big opportunity for urgent cares as relating to dental too, uh, but yeah. So that's, that's, yeah. But anyway, we we've we've heard you say before that the DSOs actually deserve some credit because you know they hire young students. They're open until eight or nine o'clock at night. They're open Saturdays. For, yeah, and so.
they're our friends. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Aspen, a Aspen, to me, of all the big boys, I mean, you, you know, you got the very, very large, maybe 35 companies have 50 or more locations. You got the very, very small, where just one doctor by himself. And then, then you got the very middle, and that could be anywhere from uh, uh, two docs to a group practice to two or three locations. And um, um, Aspen, they specific their their mission is they go where the dentist won't do Medicare yeah. or Medicaid, and uh, not Medicare. That's the federal program for Grandma Medicaid. And the the fact that um, they're going in to where the other dentist said, "Well, I'm not going to do dentistry for that fee," and then they're providing jobs to six thousand graduates who have a ton of student loan debt and need a job. Because the bottom line is, when you get out of school, I mean, there's no way of getting around it. it. Takes you three or four years of the basic filling. Crown prep, endo. I mean, you just have to do your basics for years before you get good at it. I mean, you, yeah. Absolutely. And it's, it's, I mean, it's supply and demand. You know, it's, um, I've heard you talk before in the past, um, you know, mid level providers and things of that nature. If you're in a rural community, um, put a clinic there and pay, pay off some student loans for somebody and pay them a good enough salary. And guess what? They'll come there and they'll work for two or three, four or five years. Um, and then, you know, maybe they move, maybe not. But, um, and pick a location where all the adjacent dentists are are retiring or getting close to that age. Because you've also heard you say the cheapest chart you can buy or the lowest patient acquisition is purchasing a retiring dentist charts. I mean, it's yeah. pennies on the dollar. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that um, when you sit back and think about them, they kind of make sense. Um, you know, uh, yeah, everybody wants to be in, in suburbia or close to a city or a major metropolitan area, but um, that's not always going to be financially your best move. And people that are in remote areas in the you know middle of the country, they might not have access to a dentist for 20 miles or more, but they have access to the internet and we're happy to look at their x-ray remotely for free. Yeah. And, and when you talk about ebony activity, I mean, um, you know, it's all you talk about on Wall Street. I mean, it's just all the movers and shakers. And then you go into dentistry and every time I meet a dentist, who's got a three or four million dollar practice. He sat there for 30, 40 years, and every time old man McGregor said, I'm done, he just bought the charts, moved them in. They're already, they're already within five, seven, eight miles of the practice. Mm -hmm. The old man said, you know what? That's where I want you to go. You got the third person endorsement. And um, you just, I mean, some of these guys, um, I, I mean, like 1-800-DENTIST, that's $100 a head. A Google AdWord um, in my practice or a Facebook ad is $100 a head. You start doing uh, um, direct mail, maybe 100 a head. You start doing uh, other things, uh, it could be 350 a head. And, and if you can buy an entire practice for $100 a head, and furthermore, when you use advertising and that person walks in and doesn't know you from Adam, they only spend $1. But when they're referred in and they have trust, I mean, if, if they just come into me and I say, you got four cavities and they're 250 each, you're like, wow, I just met you and you want me to give you a thousand dollars. I don't know. But if my, but if my uncle Larry sent me in here or yeah. my dentist retired and said, out of all the people in the world, I want Philip Ekman uh, to be your dentist. He's taking all my charge. And then, and then Philip tells me with his third party endorsement, I got four cavities. Then you buy $3. So when they mm -hmm. come in referred, they buy $3. When they come in from naked uh, advertising with no trust issues, I mean, you know, it's, uh, you know, I was talking, I had uh, lunch yesterday with the auto mechanic across the street from me. You know, I, and, and that's, that's a good point. You know, there, there are dentists and friends of mine that have businesses here in Ahwatukee where their last name is 14 letters long. I mean, yeah. you know, make, make, make it even, but Grulix was not a name for an auto. This should have been G's Automotive or something. To, but anyway, um, he was telling, we, we always jerk, joke around that we're in the same exact business because he fixes about 450 cars a week. And, you know, it's a big deal, but Everyone comes in, and if he says you need a new alternator, I mean, how many people know how to decide yeah. if you need an alternator or not? And if I say, well, you need a cavity, I mean, how, how the hell do you – what are you supposed to do? I mean, yeah. I mean, I grew up with five sisters playing Barbie dolls. I, I don't know what a transmission is versus an alternator. I've never changed a spark plug. I bet if you put a gun to my head, I couldn't change my oil. So <laughs> it's totally a trust deal, and he knows that. So what does he do? He's, he's – um, 
big into the community. He supports sports teams and drag racing, and and um, you know he's lived right by his office and tried to stay real visible in the schools and the churches and all that stuff because he knows his entire unbelievable business is completely based on trust. So, yeah. so I think uh, I, I think what's going to start changing that is a piece of technology that when that engine light comes on. Um, instead of just having a little engine light, I'm seeing now that the up and coming cars are going to send your iPhone a uh, a text saying what it read or an email, and then they'll probably be forwarding that text or email to a company like you guys. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, te- technology technology is making everything. Um, I mean, easier. I mean, there's just no other way to say it. You know, it's just continuing to advance, and we're trying to leverage that um, and and you know be a part of that. Yeah. So, so what else do you think everyone should know? Well, speaking of the car business, do you remember True Car going public in 2014? They had a billion dollar valuation at their IPO, and uh, their their formula is very simple. All they really do is dominate the car search, the car buying search. So, just for example, let's say they can spend five dollars on a Google ad word, and uh, you know they got to take two people go to their site to, uh, you know, the 50% click conversion. So they're, they're, they're 50%. So they're paying $10 cost of acquisition, you know, but when they get on their site, they click on a ad of a local dealership where well, the dealerships are willing to pay $12, right? So that's $2 profit times million of leads per year, you know? So yeah. we, we hope to attract users to X-ray upload for less than what someone will pay us yeah. for their click. Yeah, absolutely. That's and that's what we talked about earlier. There's a lot of lot of pathways for us uh, to to try to turn a profit down the road when we have to, when we get to that point. Um, uh, and that's just one one easy example of another market that um, you know they didn't reinvent the wheel. They just invented a car search um, company. And only 17.5 million cars were sold in 2016, which is a record. But 100 million people had dental X-rays. Yeah, well, another monetization deal, if they're um, taking photos with iPhones, any dentist has a Facebook page. I mean, every mm-hmm. month somebody private messages you a iPhone picture of your, your their tooth. Mm-hmm. And if you knew their location and uh, or on your deal, if you ask them their zip code, that's mm-hmm. what I would add. You got their gender, you got their age, put in their zip code, and then you could say, I think you have a cavity. I think the tooth is hopeless, um, but you know, you might want to go see Howie yeah. in 85044. And we would love to have a link on the reply email that said, click here to see an x-ray upload certified doctor in your area. And maybe Dennis would want to pay us to be listed on those. Yeah. 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 So I, absolutely. There are a lot, a lot of pathways. Yeah, so so why why don't you ask for their zip code right out of the gate? Too much personal information. We're not ready to do that yet. Yeah, people don't want to people don't want to give that up until they're comfortable with the brand, and we want to prove ourselves as the nice guy fact checkers. And or you could you know you understand the the freemium uh, service. You could uh, charge for an upgraded consult, which is a little more secure that uh, you would be able to li- get provide your zip code. But we. I, I, wanna, think, I think the easiest way to monetize it is sit there and give them the results and say, um, and if you have any questions, uh, there is a licensed qualified dentist in your zip code 85044, uh, and then charge that guy 100 yeah. bucks uh, a head. Yeah, absolutely. That is that is probably the most likely uh, you know route that we're going to end up taking. Um, but yeah, so I mean right now, I mean we're still, we're still up and running, and we're excited every time someone comes to the site and submits – um, you know, um, uh, image for us to interpret. So we love to get the dental st- school students from all over the country to use our free resource. Now we're in talks with some third-year students at Temple Dental School in Philadelphia, and we'd like to get back to Maryland and uh, speak there. But yeah, uh, yeah all 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 the students listening to your show, feel free to <laughs> try, to try us out once. Yeah. Well, another another way to get into those schools, I do it all the time. Is um, you know, for thirty years, you're always, you know, I always speak free in schools, but man, it just beats you up, you know, flying all the way from Phoenix to you know Fort Lauderdale, and you know, and then lecturing in class for two or three hours, then back. To, I mean, you're almost gone forty eight hours door to door. Now these dental schools, like I'm in one tomorrow, um, they they Skype you in the class. Yeah. 
So all you got to do is uh, send an email to those deans and say, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to Skype in to your class. And that way you don't have to get out of bed. You don't have to shower or bathe or brush your teeth or <laughs> floss or do any of those things that those uh, traveling people have to do. Yeah, it's amazing what technology is. I think this is really, really si- exciting. So yeah. uh, are you going to call Invisalign and try to talk to Joe Hogan or are you going to prove your concept more first? We, right now, we're still proving the concept a little bit, uh, but again, we're already starting to see. Um, you know, we're, I mean, again, we're eight, eight, eight weeks old. I mean, we're still very young, uh, but we're already seeing an increase in um, again uh, people coming to the site, um, amount of users, people submitting images. Um, so yeah, if things continue to progress, which knock on wood, you know, they're going to continue to go that route. We're going to absolutely have to contact some. Um, bigger players for lack of a, a, a better well, phrase. Well, do you have any protective moat around your business as Warren Buffett always talks about? Do you have any intellectual property, anything patentable? The reality is there's there's no unique, yeah. there's no there's no groundbreaking technology that we're utilizing. We just want to be first on the scene and, and, and best and build the brand. But have you conference. talked to an, an internet intellectual property lawyer? Yeah, we talk, all you can do is trademark the name. I mean, there's yeah. really not, there's not, a, we're not doing a, a patentable process. Yeah, at least we, we, we reached out to one uh, uh, patent attorney and got some feedback, um, but with lim- limited uh, suggestions on how to move forward with it. You, you, that's what I would do. I would go on Dentaltown and I would say, um, can you think of any unique feature I could add to this which would make it patentable? Because, okay. um, you know, Warren Buffett, I mean, that, that's why he owns a third of Coca-Cola because he said, you know, if you give me a billion dollars and I started – Warren Buffett's cola. He goes. I, you just you can't compete against Coco. The brand is is their protective protective moat. Um, there's um, you know there's there's uh, trademarks. There's you know any any type of intellectual property makes the margin. The S and P average profit margin is five percent. But you go into those companies that got a lot of intellectual property, and their margins are like thirty eight percent. Absolutely. And uh, I bet you it'd be a blast to start a thread on Dentaltown trying to get all these damn older dentists and millennials and everybody trying to brainstorm with you to find something uh, and, and, uh, patentable. If somebody can yeah. come up with a good solution, we're happy to have them on board and, and offer them a uh, – Yeah, part, yeah to, to jump in and help us out. I mean we're, we'll talk to them for sure. Um, yeah, I, 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 I actually think they, they, you don't even have to do that because uh, it's like, it's like uh, Wikipedia. I mean, Wikipedia, when they saw Microsoft uh, starting to get into the encyclopedia business, it, scared the, it was in Carta. It scared the shit out of everybody because the last guy you want controlling you know, the world's history would be Bill Gates, who had been in a <laughs> class action lawsuit with America, another one with 22 states, another one with yeah. the EU. Uh, now, now, now he's re rebuilding his image as this humanitarian going around the world uh, stamping out polio, but he's yeah. got a lot of work to do. You know, there's a lot of burned bridges there. And, um, um, oh, where was I going with that? Um, oh, oh, but so, so Wikipedia thought, you know what? People after work, they like to come home and do the LA Times crossword or the New York Times crossword, or they like to do board games or they like to play cards or something. They like to watch Wheel of Fortune and try to guess the vowel. So Wikipedia started this. They have no employees. They don't pay anybody. They're all volunteers. They have 30,000 people, mostly women, who come home and their way of unwinding is uh, instead of going to yoga or drink a bottle of beer or wine or whatever, that they, they send them one fact and they just sit there and say, um, uh, well, you know, Philip Ekman says he won uh, the uh, heavyweight lifting championship of the world uh, all three years of college, and is that true? Yeah. And then, and then, uh, you know, then second you, opinion, Howard. <laughs> second opinion. Yeah, and then they'll and then they'll look at that and they'll say, uh, and then Kevin will get on there at Wikipedia and say, you know, I I can find zero evidence of this, and they'll email you and say, I need a link, a paper, take a you know, give me some evidence, and if they can't find any evidence, they'll they'll edit it. And then if you go back and put it back in, they'll they'll take away your rights to put it. In fact, they just took away all the rights for the entire Church of Scientology because they were spending so much time uh, editing all this stuff that they were saying. And I think um, uh, look, look at AA. Mean you know that instead of after work Wikipedia, look at AA. Well, you got hundreds of thousands of volunteers you know that aren't paid a dime that you know an hour before work or after work they go in there and help somebody you know quit drinking and tell them dude i haven't had a drink for 12 years you should build an email group 
of your your daily crossword puzzle and um and where you just sit there and say sign up for this deal every night after work come home from work do your thing feed the dog get your glass of wine and we're going to text you or email you one wikipedia ish type deal and uh and it's just a way to unwind i mean i knew i know people that when they finish the new york times crossword in under an hour you would think they just threw the hell mary pass that won the super bowl I mean, I mean, they're just like, I mean, they're timing. You know what I mean? Same thing with chess. It's the, they just like games. I, I'd build up a Wikipedia cult, an AA cult, where that is just their, just their daily crossword. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, we we want to build a brand, build a following, one hundred percent. And you want to and you want to build all that labor like Zuckerberg. I mean, Zuckerberg has the largest media company in the world, and he doesn't have any any writers. It's all yet user generated content. So you want to you want to get all the dental, oral, radiologist diagnoses of, of the world around the world mm-hmm. without paying him a penny, and they'll do it just because it'll make them feel better. And, uh, and, and you have to monetize it somehow because if Wikipedia didn't have enough money for servers and all that stuff, then the service is gone. I mean, every, every time they throw a banner ad that says, Wikipedia needs your money, I always click there and give them their money, what they're asking for, because uh, you know, I sure as hell don't want Bill Gates or Fox News or CNN uh, yeah. to be the ones telling the 7.5 billion people what happened 100 years ago. I mean, they can't even, t- they can't even get the story right today. They sure as shit can't be in charge of what happened a hundred years ago, you know. Yep. T- totally agree. They're fact they're fact checkers, just like we are, Howard. Yeah, and and I'm I'm convinced that there really there's not too many facts out of mathematics because man, you can have seven dentists looking at the same X-ray on Dental Town. I mean, I'm I'm sometimes I I saw a case posted and um it was this beautiful cosmetic deal and I said, well, I think the four by cusp extraction, the ortho, I I I think it ruined the whole case. And uh, Gordon said to me, he goes, uh, it's just amazing how everybody sees something different. Some people are looking at the bleaching of the teeth. Some are looking at the midline. Some are looking at the straightness. You are looking at the uh, four by cuspid extraction. He said, there's not two dentists in the world that look at an x-ray and see the same thing. Yeah, it really gives that sunken, sunken cheekbone appearance. It takes away from the aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah, and that was all the rage when when I got out of school. I mean, most of the orthodontists, half their patients just routine four by custard extraction. Yeah, you're seeing and, less of it. I agree. Yeah, it's gone from about fifty percent to twenty five percent. It's gone from one out of two to one out of four. Well, is there anything else you want to tell my homies? Yeah, I I, I would just add that uh, piggy, piggyback on what we said earlier. Be the best clinician you can. Um, you know, if you're. Uh, doing root canals, crowns, whatever you're doing, an early practitioner, you're still in school, get as good as you can at your craft. Um, the other thing I would say is it is never too early um, to start knowing finance, knowing business. Um, you know, at some point you're probably gonna own your own business. You need to understand this stuff inside and out. You need to understand um, overhead, insurance. Um, you need to understand how to uh, pay your staff. You need to understand interest rates. Um, you know, this is stuff you got to know. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess at the end of the day, you can try to pay people to help you do this stuff. But, um, you know, if you're going to lead your, your business and, uh, and your practice, uh, you, you got to know this stuff. You got to be the most knowledgeable person. Um, and, it's, and if it's not something you're passionate about, it's okay to just be an employee dentist. We need those too. You yeah. know, the DSOs are very nice opportunity for that. Yeah, you know when you get out of school, you you need time. You're not gonna you're not gonna win a marathon in the time it takes you to do a hundred yard dash. Yeah, uh, and would, you need I, mentors. You know, I would, I would encourage I would encourage all the the listeners out there go to Dental Town, um, learn as much as you can, read Dental Economics, um, whatever it is. You know, that's information that's gonna help you a lot. And like Howard said, it's a marathon. It's you know if you can find a way to shave a quarter percent off your student loans or or whatever it is you don't think it's a big deal but it is you know all those things really add up in the long run that'll allow you to maybe open another location and help more people and that's what we want to do yeah yeah well actually that's what my my consensus after fifty five laps around the sun is that entrepreneurism comes from empathy some people look at someone having a hard time doing something and they just say it is what it is. But the heart of entrepreneurism is to say, you know, surely there's got to be a better way yep. that grandma can get up those steps or a patient can brush their teeth with rheumatism. They're, they're, they're always looking at their fellow social humans in an empathetic, sympathetic way and then try to monetize it because if I need to get build grandma a ramp or a wheelchair, I can't do it with 
pixel fairy dust. Absolutely. And, and, and I also feel sorry for the rich guys because they're always guilt shamed into always giving money to charities. And it's like, dude, Just invest. The free, free inter- the fortune 500 is solving more solutions and for them to take their seed capital and give it over here to, a, you know, for whoever doing what, I don't really even know if that's the most efficient. I, I think of your product is making everything faster, easier, higher quality, lower cost, and helping more people, and they're buying it, and they're feeling that growth, that's probably the most impactful charity. I mean, if you look at the gains of how people lived 100 years ago to today, uh, you know, most of that came from capitalism. It comes from capitalism. I, you took the words right out of my mouth. I, I could not agree more. Um, 100% capitalism has done more to lift more people out of poverty, um, to raise um, standards, um, SES standards, and uh, throughout the world, this country specifically um, have have improved vastly. Um, you know, still still areas where we can improve, but um, capitalism will solve a lot of problems that um, you know government or uh, other agencies cannot solve. And, and what does Dr. Christensen always say? Faster, easier, better, and less expensive. Yeah, and that's why this country is so divided on healthcare because. You know, when you talk to my good friends that go to Lifetime and swim and, you know, when they're in Canada, they said, yeah, it was the best health care ever. But sometimes uh, I had to wait six months for that. My, my father one time had to wait two years for this and all that. So that's the, tr- you know, they got yeah. access. Um, but I, that, that's where America is split because like, like what you did is a high tech uh, procedure. And they're just afraid that if you take um, the free enterprise capitalism out of health care, you're going to get the post office and the Department of Motor Vehicles. They want, they want some kind of hybrid, you know. Yeah. Well, do you know where the best doctors in Canada are, Doctor Ferran? They're uh, they're in the U.S. right over the border. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. It, it, the healthcare is so emotional. It, it it makes me the maddest. Uh, I I don't want to say anything too much hip away, but I mean I've had patients of mine for thirty years that worked and paid taxes and all that stuff. And then when they got their brain cancer and the only thing they can find on the internet, you know, it's, it's made in America, but the only place they could go get it would be like Denmark or Sweden or Switzerland. I'm I'm not talking about crazy stuff and, and, you know, poor places in Asia, Africa and central and South America. I'm talking about first class and like, like Copenhagen, Denmark, that's three shape Finland. I mean, they, they make plan Mecca and, and they had to sell their house and move to Scandinavia because they couldn't get the treatment here. And it's like, dude, I get it if you want to say that it's not approved and that since it's not approved, it won't be covered by Medicare, Medicare insurance. But for a government official to tell me I'm dying of brain cancer and there's some scientist in this country says, this is your, this is your only chance to stop that. I mean, I yeah. think that is, yeah, that, that is just over the top criminal. Yeah, absolutely. I I 100% agree. Um, and uh, you know, I personally believe in a lot of patient autonomy. Um, and so, you know, it gets like you said, it gets more complex when the government gets involved and who's paying and and what's going on. But um, I agree. Um, very very challenging for a lot of people to want to sign up for a healthcare system where the government uh, has the final say on on what gets for, done. For 25 know. years, I've been writing uh, Senator John McCain and his wife, Cindy, that, uh, you know, in Arizona, we got a bunch of retirees. We got the Mayo Clinic. And we got these, there's a big Indian reservation on the west side and the south side. And there, you know, they have gambling and casinos and all that. I always say, why don't you make that a free, a free FDA zone instead of a free trade zone? Why can't there just be two areas where the FDA can go screw themselves? And, and if you're sitting there, if you're a red-blooded American, you don't want to move. Who wants to move to Helsinki, Finland, or Copenhagen if your whole family and culture and church and friends, you know, is right here? And there's so many ho- – I mean, Phoenix is the largest uh, state capital. It's 1.4 million. There's no state capital that is as big as Phoenix. And uh, every time I, uh, I send that letter or talk to them or their people, they say, oh, my God, you, you, you could never get that passed. It's like, yeah. why? Why? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It ma- it makes sense if you're. And uh, it's also research. Why would you want to do research on monkeys and apes when they're you know not the same DNA as you? I mean, if if grandma wants to be a volunteer lab rat for a new chemotherapy, I mean, she's gonna die anyway. If that's how she wants to go out being, uh, you know, a lab test, it'd be better on a human with the exact cancer than trying to extrapolate from mice and rats and pigs. 
again, pay, patient autonomy. And that's that's at the end of the day, that's the problem you're going to run into. The government's going to say yes or no to, to what what you're allowed to do. Um, and it's going to create conflict. There's no doubt about it. And by the way, if you ever do decide to get money and you don't want to get in bed with a venture capitalist or you'd rather get in bed with someone who has a lot of money in their dentist, every one of those CEOs, I mean, you can just name Rick Workman of Heartland, uh, Stephen Thorne of Pacific, uh, Fontana at Aspen. Th- those guys are uh, venture capital seed fund. They'll, they'll either look at it and say, you know, li- li- like Shark Tank. They'll either look at it like, you know, uh, um, Mark Cuban or Mr. Wonderful and tell you what they see wrong with it, and then you can go fix it. Or they might say, no, I mean, I, I have 600 locations. I see how this works. And, uh, but they're, they're a lot smarter investor than a venture capital guy whose last deal was in you know, consumer you know, clothing or something. Or you yeah, know, you get, the, you get the strategic partner. I, yeah, we agree. yeah. No those guys, be, those be. guys. I mean, you can. Uh, um, I mean, I mean, when you when you own six hundred dental offices with a billionaire cash flow, I mean, that they they have so much access to so much more information and resource, whatever. But if you ever need VC money, I'd go hit those guys up. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thanks. All right, guys. Well, uh, tell your story on Dentaltown. Tell it to Tom Giacobbe. He might cover in Dentaltown Magazine. That goes to 125,000 dentists every month, and uh, Orthotown goes to 10,000 orthodontists. And then it's digitally sent all over the world. Um, and uh, tell your story, and best of luck to you. And, my God, I'll be, your, uh, I'll be cheerleading on the side here. Thanks, Howard. You're the man. Appreciate it. And let me know if you need anything. Will, will do. Thanks, Howard.